Okay, back again. Uh, I wanted to wait until it uh, finished all the base and started up the uprights. Uh, I left uh, two little ears on this bottom where the fan is going to mount, and that way I'll have better airflow in the, between uh, the centers. Uh, I don't know if that's clear or not, but uh, anyway, uh, right now it's building, uh, starting to build the horizontal pieces that'll go across the motor. Uh, the fan will just drop down below these two rails on the x-axis to where it'll clear this uh, x idler end. And uh, so far it's been real good. I mean, uh, it's jumped around and it's done it uh, with very little stray ooze between the two uprights. And that's all it's printing now is the uprights. It's finished with the rest of it. So I think I finally got the right combination of uh, the infill with the uh, it, with the filament diameter and all that because it looks like it's doing real well. I really like the finish that I'm getting on these parts. Uh, it really looks good to me. I'm satisfied with it. Anyway, uh, Um, I haven't done anything else to the machine uh, since the other videos, um, except for adding these lights, and I, I did hook up the fans, uh, both two of them in. These lights are uh, just 20 centimeters long, uh, or 200 millimeters. Uh, and they're for automotive, they're 12 volts per uh, stick. They're, uh, um, flexible, they're the flexible type. And uh, what I did was take some black tape and put over the rear, taped it over the rear and then just tie wrapped it to the uprights so that, uh, uh, it wouldn't light coming out of the rear, so that way all the light is uh, directed towards the front and then out of the rear, so that works out really good too. At least I can see what's going on now. You can see the heat bed really good, I can tell what's going on. Don't really have to have an overhead light, it's off right now. So everything in the background is pretty dark except for the machine itself. But anyway, uh, it's been tricked up a little. Uh, still completely functional. Uh, in fact, it's more functional now that I have uh, my D-spooler working. And uh, I've got some other ideas for improvements. So I'll enlighten you as we go along. Uh, I think maybe uh, this print is a little over 50% complete now. Uh, we may be able to get it all in. I won't be taking the part off the heat bed, even though the heat bed heat has been turned off for probably uh, about 10 or 12 minutes or longer uh, but the part I need to let the part cool off before uh, I try prying it off because I might inadvertently uh, uh, bend the end slightly and that would maybe offset the center of it so I'd, I'd prefer to let it cool off the thing with the bolt actually did uh, 
make my mind up on that. Just let the parts cool on the heat bed before you, especially a part like this, it's going to have thin pieces hanging up on it, you know. Uh, but the bolt, once it cooled down, it went, the nut went right on. I mean, it was, it was uh, really amazing. I didn't realize, of course it is solid, the bolt was solid, and uh, just maybe, I don't know, it was extruded out at 185 Celsius, but uh, it didn't stay that way very long, but uh, it was evidently still warming the core of it. But anyway, I'll, I will let these uh, cool off on the heat bed, or let this one cool off on the heat bed before I take it off. But I will show you the uh, net result on a future video, probably the next one. Uh, this one should be number five. Uh, it's actually a continuation of number four. But... Uh, Anyway, uh, I knew this was going to be a long print, uh, but now I'm a little more confident on my long prints uh, now that I've got my fans on my motors, and I'm not sure uh, just how I can't feel any heat off that one, off that extrusion motor. And I'm assuming the fan on the end is heating or uh, cooling the gear off too, because uh, there is an opening there on the end, and the the, uh, the gear is exposed. So well, hopefully that's uh, helping somewhat. Uh, I did tell about the 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 guy on his own video on YouTube that was uh, having difficulty with his long term prints uh, he, uh, he ended up getting a wad of plastic just below his extrusion gear and he was using the same machine as this as well it was the Maker Gear Pressa Mendel kit and uh, anyway uh, he solved it with a fan just one fan on the motor uh, he mounted it sort of uh, at an angle on top, I do believe. But uh, anyway, I, I thought I'd put it under so it would be out of the way because I've got a plan on a modification too for up here on top on these top vertexes so that I can actually gain another inch and a half of travel for very tall prints. Uh, in the future. Uh, right now I can print any part on the machine within the working envelope of this machine without the additional height or without my 200 millimeter uh, XY envelope. So uh, this is printing uh, one part or one set of parts at a time. I can actually create a script in open SCAD to print more than one STL file at a time and it has to do with uh, actual positioning you, you uh, transcribe the position you want to start in like I could start one part over on the left side of X the other part transcribe it over here on the right side of X and then import the X STL file uh, for each of those parts and print two parts at once. Uh, yeah, SFACT will scheme those individual files and create the layers for printing both parts at the same time. You can actually do that with a whole bed of parts. Uh, the press, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Prusa. The Prusa, uh, plate they call it there's four plates that make all the printed parts for a Prusa machine Prusa Mendel and um, all those plates import individual SDL files in certain positions on the plate to uh, print the whole set on four plates so there you go that's how they do it 
Um, but anyway, uh, this thing here is over 75% complete now. And I've still got time to let her go. I've still got about uh, four minutes and probably 40 seconds to, to go. So I think it's going to complete. It'll be interesting to see what happens with my top hooks, the hooks that are going to hook onto the end of the motor off these ends here because they will be freestanding out in midair and I may end up having to trim those a little bit to get rid of uh, the sag but I think they'll be a slight, uh, slight sag surely but uh, hopefully not a lot if I had a fan uh, around the extrusion head it wouldn't sag hardly at all with this uh, PLA the PLA, once it cools slightly, it will solidify really easily back to, uh, to where it won't sag anymore. But anyway, uh, I don't have the fans around the extruder because that's another problem. If, uh, if the fan hits the nozzle itself, that'll cool the material in the nozzle before it's extruded out. And I just lost my PLA, just came off the spool up here. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got enough left for a couple more prints, looks like. You can see the white right here, or actually it's natural, showing through underneath there. It, this is a full spool, uh, one kilogram of natural ABS, which uh, I will be using to print these uh, machine parts for my machine here. As spares. It's really not a bad idea to have a set of spare parts. Something could happen and break. But I do have the Maker Gear uh, STL files on most everything here and especially the parts that are uh, non-standard rip wrap like these uh, pulleys here there's three pulleys on this machine like this that are printed and uh, this is non-standard rip wrap because uh, normally a rip wrap uses a, a bearing in the middle with uh, two small washers and then two large fender washers for each side to keep the belt on and then uh, two smaller uh, washers with the bearing on each side so uh, this is really non-standard rip wrap but it's perfectly acceptable rip wrap I mean uh, uh, it has nothing to do with the philosophy of rip wrap to have these on the machine <laughs> put it that way uh, we're coming in now. Uh, we're almost finished. Uh, it's going to be close. I've got about a minute and 15 seconds left, and I'll have to stop this. But I could uh, splice it actually show you the whole thing as it's sitting on the bed um, I think it started printing the the hooks it looks like it looks like it's printed the left one I believe it has and there may be a little sag there Maybe. It's hard to tell. Okay, I'm just going to sign off and I'll show you the, the net result on the next video. So, uh, thanks for watching. Happy rip wrapping. And uh, see you next time. Bye.